Hey folks, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. Also home of the best MJ community. Today is Saturday, November 11th. And for those of you in Canada, my fellow Canadians, happy Remembrance Day, lest we forget our veterans. Going to get started with today's rapid fire news update. This is going to be for the period November 4th to November 10th. Again, if you're not familiar with these new format, with this new format, essentially in 15 minutes or so, I try to go through the most important and pertinent information and news articles that happened over the last week or so. And as you might have noticed, last week was an extremely busy week. So this might be a little bit of a longer video, but we're going to get to all of that and more. Before we do, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. And you can smash the like, uh, subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff. And you'll be notified on any future videos or whenever I go live. I really do love each and every one of you who supported me along the way. And let me know in the comments below what you think of this new format. Also make sure to give Power Group a follow on X which is previously Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And I also just posted on there the Kanika darts. I just picked up some, uh, it's a new product from Tilray. It's the brand Kanika and their new darts. Essentially, it's using the Redican Redis technology. And this one's called Magic Mochaccino. And it absolutely smells delightful. Haven't dipped into it yet, but I'll keep everybody posted on my thoughts and opinions. If you tried these, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. MJ Biz Daily reports that Ohio adult use MJ legalization could spawn $4 billion market, but lawmakers a wild card. And as we know, they actually moved to uh, to legalize. Voters did approve that, so we'll go through that here in a moment, a little bit later on in the video. Also, shook what shook the sector was Organigram stock soared over, uh, I think it was like 50% on the news. I was up about 40, 50% after British American Tobacco will be investing 91.3 million US. That equated to about 124.6 million Canadian and another vote of confidence that this space isn't going anywhere. And in my opinion, Organigram is going to be one of those companies long-term that has long-term staying power. And full disclosure, I do own Organigram in my portfolio. And if you haven't seen my portfolio top five holdings, I do an, my top five MJ holdings video. I also did another video on my entire MJ portfolio breakdown with percentages. So you can just go to my channel and search that if you'd like to see that. Oxley to report third quarter 2023 financial results on November 13th, 2023. So that'll be on Monday. And I mentioned it on the previous rapid fire news updates from last week that SNDL reports Monday as well. So all eyes will be on SNDL as one of the leaders in the space as well. Also, Constellation Brands is walking from the remaining warrants of MJ firm Canopy. So alcohol giant Constellation Brands said it's all its warrants have expired to purchase common shares of Canadian MJ producer Canopy Growth and signaled it has no other present plans to re that relate to Canopy. And they mentioned that it could potentially change depending on market conditions and economic and industry conditions as well, but Canopy's business and financial condition or other relevant factors. So not the greatest news, but you know, they do have a lot of exposure. They received, you know, billions of dollars from Constellation. So it's not the end of the world. I think it's just them, you know, kind of putting their foot on the brake a little bit here until we get some more certainty with regards to the outcome of the sector. And in my opinion, we're not that far away for some major catalyst, right? We know we could get potential for rescheduling uh, before the end of the year, which we'll cover here in just a moment. Uh, actually, that was the next article. DEA likely to okay MJ rescheduling, but election and lawsuits could get in the way. So we know next year's an election year. We could also see safer banking. We could see legalization of medical in the U.S., the MJ Act review here in Canada. So there's tons of uh, there's tons of catalysts on the horizon, but the biggest one will be rescheduling. And, you know, the most likely scenario, in my opinion, will be Schedule 3. I think that's going to happen. And then at some point it'll get enacted in 2024 and then 280E will go away, the biggest problem right now in the industry. And that will be monumental. That will be the biggest catalyst to date, in my opinion, and will send the sector soaring and likely end a multi-year bear market and potentially start a new multi-year bull market. And then there's even a bipartisan bill right now going through Congress uh, from Nancy Mace, Republican uh, Nancy Mace, spearheading that for the second time and is looking to and it's got bipartisan support, but they're essentially they're looking to remove it altogether from the Controlled Substances Act, which would deschedule it, right? And then be treated the same as alcohol, which is ultimately where I think we're going. But I think it'll be a crawl, walk, run approach where they'll reschedule it to Schedule 3 and then potential descheduling. Also, Ascend Wellness Q3 revenue lifts 15% sequentially. So there was tons of earnings. It was season, earnings season last week. And uh, while I would like to cover every single one of them, I, I wasn't able to, just haven't been feeling the greatest, got hit with COVID and uh, 
been moving and whatnot. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, when things cal calm down, I can maybe go back and do a couple more reviews and in, in depth of some of those other companies as well. I'd really like to dive into some of them, uh, some that I'll be mentioning here in just a moment. Also, I did a video on this, but Ogen is the latest Canadian MJ producer to close its doors as the troubling times continue in Canada. Uh, this wasn't a public company, but it, it hit home, it hit close to home here because this was a company based out of Calgary, Alberta, and 87 people lost their jobs. So heart goes out to those people and hopefully they find a new job in the industry at some point soon. Ohio becomes the 24th state to legalize recreational MJ. So this is great news, obviously going to be a massive market. And then Florida is going to be another massive market. I've been saying for a while now, it's probably going to be the biggest market in the world, especially in the US, but uh, I would argue in the entire globe. Uh, so that I think Florida has a real chance of getting on the ballot for 2024. And then at some point in 2024, late 2024, you know, we should find out in November during the elections. It's going to be election year as well. We know that we're starting to see more, uh, you know, candidates and campaigns start to embrace and kind of put MJ in the spotlight. And I think that's going to be a trend that will continue into the next elections as well. But this is great to see. And Ohio is a Republican state. So it goes to show you that if Ohio can get it done, then that is a sign that the times are changing, right? And then we need to get, you know, like the Mitch McConnell's out of the, out of there, you know, I'm not on either side of the aisle, but if they're not for it, vote him out. And, you know, maybe he'll even retire. He's in his 80s now. So once we get, you know, more younger demographic in office, then that's just going to add to that inevitable, you know, inevitable outcome of MJ being accepted at the federal level. Support for, speaking of federal level, support for MJ legalization reaches record high of 70%, including strong majority of Republicans Gallup poll shows. So again, times are changing and game theory is playing out once, you know, the 24th state, Ohio becomes the 24th state, right? <laughs> it's just a matter of time before, you know, three quarters of the US is legalized at the recreational level. And then the federal government will have no other choice but to get on board. Also, I did a video on this, the Florida Supreme Court hearing arguments um, in case to decide if MJ legalization will appear on the 2024 ballot. So I go through this in, in depth and I give my thoughts and opinions on it. I did a video dedicated to that. So if you haven't seen that, you can check that out for more details. Also, TrueLeave announces notice of redemption for all US 130 million of its 9.75% senior secured notes due in 2024. Also, Verano Q3 revenue grows 3% sequentially to 240 million. And then we had a strong quarter for GTI as well. Third quarter revenue of 275 million increased 9% sequentially. Uh, this is a company that I hold as well, very bullish on. And if you're wondering why I'm not going into deep dive details, again, that's not the point of this video. It's just to kind of go over a high level overview. And then if you want to learn more about it, you can go do so on your own time. But uh, another great quarter from, from Green Thumb. And like I said, I hope I hope to do a little bit more deep dives into some of those MSOs as well. Also, Kronos Group, third quarter results, top estimates on Canada retail MJ growth. And they're sitting on a big pile of cash. What was it? Like, eight, yeah, 840 million US as of September 30th, 2023. Uh, so stock had a little bit of a pop there, but not much. Uh, kind of came back down to earth once other companies reported. And the sector con continued to remain weak after giving back pretty much all of the gains from the HHS recommendation hype. Metafarm Labs also sets date to report third quarter 2023 financial results. So that'll be before market open on Tuesday, November 14th. Also Tilray and Good Supply MJ launches Get Blitzen, Get Blitzen holiday campaign and new limited edition products across Canada. And I think we're going to see a lot more products from Tilray as well over the next couple of months. And uh, it's a seasonality effect as well into the into the uh, the Christmas time, so you know we had those uh, holiday readies that look like candy can readies or whatever, and then they're going to be launching the hemp paper into the readies and new strains as well. So keep an eye out on, uh, for that. True Leave Q3 revenue slips less than expected, so they generated cash flow from operations of 93 million and free cash flow of 87 million. They reduced their debt with purchase of 57 million of 2026 notes and announced redemption of that 130 million of 2024 notes, which I mentioned, resulting in 20 million in interest savings through maturity and expect 2023 operation or operating cash flow of at least 100 million and free cash flow of at least 70 million. So they also came in at 275, similar to GTI uh, for the quarter with 96% of revenues from retail sales. And then what was their cash? Cash as of September 30, 2023 was approximately 200 million. Also Charlotte's Web reports 2023 third quarter financial results. And again, you can check out 
the articles if you want to learn more about that. But try not to uh, go into deep dive details because I try to keep the videos uh, as short as possible. But uh, this Charlotte's Web definitely not really on the radar for a lot of retail investors. It was at one point a crown jewel, and uh, th there was you know tons of momentum in the stock. But ever since the bear market, uh, it's kind of fell by the wayside. But don't lose sight of Charlotte's Web. Keep an eye on that. Nice CBD play, in my opinion. Also, CV Sciences Inc. to announce their quarter 2023 results on November 14, 2023, as earnings season continues. Also, Cureleaf missed revenue analyst estimates for Q3. Their third quarter 2023 revenue of $330 million, excluding $3.5 million from discontinued operations, representing an increase of 2% year over year and adjusted EBITDA of $75 million. Third quarter 2023 operating cash flow from continuing operations of $47 million and free cash flow from continuing operations of $33 million. Also, Aurora MJ announced fiscal 2024 second quarter results, and they delivered record positive adjusted EBITDA. I just did a video on this one yesterday. So again, if you want to learn more about that, I go into deep dive details and I give my thoughts and opinions. That was a highly requested name uh, that we covered in that, uh, in that, well, the community had asked a lot over the last couple of days. So you ask and I deliver. So you can check out that video if you want to learn more, but they essentially had just a very small loss and they beat in terms of revenue and EPS estimates. So start, starting to look pretty good here with quarterly net revenue rising 30% year over year and obviously a, more of a medical play. And uh, yeah, things are starting to turn around for Aurora. For, full disclosure, I don't own any, but again, it's certainly looking like the company may, they, they even mentioned that they could be doing some, some further M a so mergers and acquisitions, but uh, it's going to be interesting. Keep that on your radar as well as a nice rebound play here with tons of uh, reward versus risk at this point, given the current share price and down uh, downside that we've seen. Could there no be another share consolidation? It's possible. Uh, it all depends on how quickly this sector reverses. And like I said, if we get that DEA recommendation of Schedule Three approved uh, into the end of the year, that is going to send this market absolutely bonkers. Also, Terrasen reported record third quarter 2023 results and raises full year 2023 guidance. And net revenue was 89.2 million, an increase of 34.7 year over year and 23.7% per, sequentially. And then Canopy Growth reported their second quarter fiscal year 2024 financial results. And again, I did a video on that one, so you can check that out for more information on that. But they did miss in terms of analyst estimates. And uh, they do hold 17% on the conference call. They said that they still hold 17% uh, ownership in Terrasend. And they mentioned that Terrasend was one of their uh, US strategies. So that was a very interesting comment there from David Klein, the CEO of Canopy. And we know that they're set to potentially acquire acreage once federally permissible as well. And then they have Jetty and Wana. And they mentioned that, uh, was it, I think it was Wana uh, is, is uh, releasing the vapes. So where was it here? Let's go down. Let me just find that real quick here. Introduce, yeah, so no, it's Jetty. Yeah, so Jetty introduced its award winning vape products in Colorado, and they achieved number three market share in the solventless vape category in the state in just three months after launch. So if you've tried those products, let me know in the comment section below. Also, Ianthus reported third quarter 2023 financial results. This is a company that has fell by the way wayside as well, revenue of 42.9 million. And uh, this could be a bio target, in my opinion, as we look for further consolidation in the space. Also, not so great news. German lawmakers postpone MJ legalization vote scheduled for next week, pushing proposed reform into 2024. So it's all all eyes on 2024 being a nice turnaround year for MJ, potentially, uh, with tons of catalysts looming. And we know that Germany has kind of just been kicking the can down the road. They've been struggling to get any kind of reform done. And uh, it's looking like it's going to be a little bit later, but could coincide nicely with a nice sector rally and uh, rescheduling, maybe even descheduling, removal of 280E, right? Tons of catalysts on the horizon. So it's looking like 2024 could be the year of MJ. But going to end it there, hope you have a great rest of your weekend. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us in the pursuit of wealth. Smash the like if you think I earned it today. Share the video with your network. And let me know in the comments what you think of this news and what you think of this new format. All right, have a great one. Talk to you in the next video.